Bye, Mr. President. The situation at the moment is this. Either there's been an, an intentional attack, and there is considerable evidence that there was an intentional attack, although it isn't entirely conclusive at the moment, or, at the very least, there's been a substantial engagement. There were four or five PT boats. They were on both sides of our destroyers. Our destroyers fired back. The destroyers believed they sank three of the PT boats. The engagement took place over a period of an hour or so. After the first shots were fired, and these were warning shots by the destroyers against the PT boats, the PT boats continued to close on the destroyers. So either there's been an intentional attack or a very substantial engagement. Uh, I'm inclined to think it requires some response uh, in the form of U.S. military action other than simply firing on the PT boats. What that form of response should be is, is the major question. Is this, the, the chiefs, if there is to be any attack on North Vietnam, believe that it should come in two waves a night wave against the makes on the airfields in North Vietnam roughly 24 hours from now. A day wave following that night wave by roughly uh, 12 hours, say roughly 36 hours from now, against certain selected targets in North Vietnam. Assuming that, that uh, for the minute that that were the course of action, we can't wait 24 and 36 hours before saying something. The first thing that has to be said is about 45 minutes from now when I've got to respond to questions that are coming into our press room as to why I didn't go to Chicago. I've got 2,000 people waiting at lunch out there for a speech. I sent the Secretary of the Army in my place. I've got to say why I didn't go. I would propose in about half an hour to simply say that uh, certain matters came up here that demand my attention and therefore the Secretary of the Army substituted for me and just say nothing more than that. And that will get us by for two or three or four hours. The press will be unhappy, but they can't do anything about it. Then about three or four hours from now, I think we're going to have to say something about this attack. I, experience shows we can't hold this information more than that. It'll be leaking out as it began to last time. Before we say anything about the attack on the destroyers, I think we should try to make a decision as to our follow-on action. And therefore, I propose this. I get Dean Rusk and Mac Bundy over here that we meet with the chiefs, discuss all these alternatives, and then be prepared to see you about an hour or two from now at your convenience. That's good. I'll be ready any time you're ready. And I I think we ought to follow the same procedure that we did last time. And that looked like to me that you pretty well know uh, what the alternatives are yes, when you sir. come here so that we don't uh, explore around. And, right. Uh, I'll, I'll do that. We'll follow the same procedure. Now, uh, uh, what do we have in that area? If we start messing around on airfields and they, yes, sir, we they come out of there, coming are we sufficiently yes, ready sir, we believe so we have two carriers there now the bonhomme and the uh, constellation we have a third one the ranger which is 400 and some odd miles from the the desoto patrol at present and has already radioed in that they can launch if necessary immediately or i should say from their present position we have two b-57 squadrons in, in uh, South Vietnam at the present time available for this kind of action. We have certain F-100 aircraft, I've forgotten how many, in, say on the order of 10 or 12 or something like that in South Vietnam. We have a, an F-100 squadron in Thailand that could be moved over to South Vietnam for this action. And we could move, I think, an additional squadron, although I'm not sure of this, in from the Philippines in time for this. So we have, I would say to answer your question, ample forces available for whatever course of action you wish to carry out against North Vietnam. Now, Bob, I have found uh, over the years that uh, we see and we hear and we imagine a lot of things uh, in the form of uh, attacks and uh, shots and uh, yeah. uh, people uh, running at us. And I think it would be very vulnerable, make us very vulnerable, if uh, uh, we uh, conclude that uh, uh, these people were attacking us and we were merely responding. And it develops that that just wasn't true at all. And I think we ought to check that very, very carefully. And I don't know why in the hell, sometime or other, they can't be sure that they're being attacked. Uh, it looks like to me they'd hear a shot or see a shot or do something before they just get worked up and start pulling a LeMay on us. And, uh, I think that if, uh, if we uh, have this kind of response and then it develops, that we just started with our own destroyers, that people are going to uh, conclude and
correctly and unjustly, but that we just uh, playing cops yeah. and trying to get a lot of attention and trying to show how tough we are. Now, I want to be tough where we need to be tough and where we're justified in being tough, and I want to do whatever is necessary, but uh, I sure want more uh, caution on the part of these admirals and these destroyer uh, commanders, whoever they are, about uh, whether they're being fired on or not. Yeah. I don't want them just to have some change of life woman running up and saying that I got she's being raped yeah. when they're just because a man walks in the room. And that looks like to me that's what happens in uh, the 30 years I've been watching them. Well, this is a uh, man get enough braid on him, and he walks in the room, and he just immediately concludes that he's being attacked. Yeah. And you, that's the basic argument between you and Goldwater. That's exactly right. Now, now let's don't get sucked in on the on his side of it. Right, and and that's what we're trying to, to probe here. We, this is the reason why I have Take the been. best military men you have, though, and just tell them, and I have, I've been watching and listening to these stories for 30 years for the Armed Services Committee, and we're always sure we're going to attack, and in a day or two, we're not so damn sure, and in a day or two more, we we're sure it wasn't, didn't happen at all. Yeah, yeah. And I just say that you want to be sure before you tell me that we were fired upon, that we were fired upon, because you just came in like, a few weeks ago, and said, that damn, they're launching an attack on us. They're firing on us. And we got through with all the firing, we concluded maybe they hadn't fired at all. Well, we will certainly be prepared for that, Mr. President. That's really what we've been doing in the two hours since I first called you. And we've got a number of messages here now and considerable evidence that, as I say, there was either an intentional attack or a substantial engagement. I differentiate one from the well, other. What is, what is a substantial engagement? Well, I mean that we could have started it and they just responded. But they stayed there for an hour or so. Uh, the first They'd be justified staying off if we start shooting at them. Well, you'd have thought they'd break off. We shot a warning shot across their bows, so the messages say. And instead of turning around, they kept coming toward the destroyers. And they split up and passed on either side of them, uh, which is what you would do if you were closing for an attack instead of breaking off. But uh, in any case, I couldn't agree with you more. The question you raise is a basic question, and this is what we've been trying to develop now, evidence on. Did you get any, uh, what's your reaction to our disclosures in California? Anything uh, bad? Oh, no, no, on the contrary. I think very good. I met with the press this morning at 9 o'clock for half an hour on that subject, to brief them uh, as much as I could. Still any criticism? Or? No, no. They, matter of fact, I, I thought the basic question would be, why do you disclose this now? Uh, isn't it being done for political reasons? But the question didn't even arise. Now, they may still take off on me in the press on that, but they didn't raise that question. What is the answer? Well, the answer is that, that uh, we hold all information classified relating to new weapon systems as long as we can, and we only disclose it when it's likely to be disclosed anyhow. We've held this for a year or so very, very uh, successfully, but now we're bringing in so many industrial contractors that magazines have begun to refer to this as likely. There was an, an article three months ago in Aviation Week. There's been another article in the last several weeks, and, and therefore it's being disclosed piecemeal, erroneously, and our own people are going to be informed by the Soviets or others about one of their own weapon systems, and we felt we had a responsibility to them to inform them directly. Now, you ought to bear in mind you got six more weeks to go. I know. I'm running out of new weapons. <laughs> so you better, you better get your people busy over there. I see yes, the sir. Navy is putting out this or that. Just tell them all now. They've got real responsibilities to get you. Tell them each week that I'm asking you, what are you doing in that big department of $50 billion, and you want some answers. Well, I have a meeting with the secretaries every Monday morning at 8.30 on this. We've got a long list of projects here. They're all aware of that. I'd have some economy, and I'd, I'd have some orders out yeah. to... Uh, uh, 4th Army, 8th Army, 7th Army, whatever you got different ones on, you got different reports on, you know, efficiencies and things of that kind. I'd take every imaginative step I could in the, these uh, prudent fields and uh, uh, that we can uh, refer to. Okay, sir, very good. Uh,